Hey. All right. It looks like we're live. Welcome back to another Growth Lab training session, everyone. Uh, today we're joined by marketing experts Stacy and Sean from Mute Six. Welcome to the Growth Lab. Hey, thanks for having us. Uh, happy to be here. Super excited to talk hey. about some creative, fun stuff, show some examples of things. This is going to be fun. Yeah, glad to have you guys here. So, uh, you know, while we get people to, uh, you know, um, fully join the show, I, I prepped a few questions for you guys. So just a okay. few quick, quick rapid fire. And um, so just to kick things off, um, Stacy, uh, what was the first video ad you ever created at Music? Uh, the first video ad I ever created at Mute 6. Wow, I actually helped make an ad on my very first day. Uh, one of my favorite things about Mute 6 is you really get the opportunity to hit the ground running there. There's no real pause and, you know, get acclimated to anything. We just like to dive right in. Um, and my first day there, one of the uh, campaign managers that I work with um, was trying to figure out an exciting way to fix up an ad that he had that was kind of boring and make it a little bit more exciting. Uh, the conversion rate was really nice, but not a lot of people were stopping on it. And we're going to get into why that's important later. But uh, my first day there, we ended up, it was a health thing. And we were talking about how, you know, everyone assumes salads are healthy, but they might not be the best thing for your health. And this app, this uh, service could help you determine that. So we made an ad that said, drop that salad. And we went, we bought a bag of lettuce for like a dollar and 30 cents. And we put it in a Tupperware and we dropped it on the floor. Oh. And we had uh, not even a camera. I had my phone set up on the floor. So we watched this salad fall. The lettuce bounced out of it. And then when we put it into a video edit, we actually had it drop and then reversed it back up out of the frame. So the lettuce fell on the ground and then went back in the bowl and reversed up out of the frame. And the text said, drop that salad. And then when the salad reversed up, it said, does your DNA even like salad? <laughs> and uh, I think it might still be running to this day. I've seen it a couple of times right. online still. And that was probably like a year and a half ago. But that was a really fun, exciting, you know, diving right in and making the best with what we could within arm's reach situation. Uh, that sounds awesome. Maybe maybe w one of our attendees can, uh, can try to find a link to that ad and drop it in the chat. <laughs> I'd love to check it out. <laughs> Um, all right, Sean, I got a question for you as well. Okay. Uh, when was the camera invented? No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Turn into trivia. I feel like it was in 1816. I don't know about that, though. We might want to Google it. Yeah, I, I, think, uh, I think you might be right there, Stacey. Um, all right, so uh, what is your favorite all-time, uh, your all-time favorite video ad, Sean? Favorite video ad? Like ever, ever, yes. or just that we've made in general? It can be at uh, Mute 6 or ever, ever, whichever you prefer. At Mute, uh, I can go, overall, I love the, uh, you know, like these higher production ones. Those higher production ones are always fun where it's like Dollar Shave Club and they're funny and they, they elevate the brand. Uh, I But ones I've done, I love doing UGC. And uh, there's one that I did with Stuffed Animals, which is like called User Generated Content. So we send like, you know, these stuffed animals to several uh, people out at their homes, especially during COVID times. And they film and they're excited. They film with their kids and they show them. And then like we pop it together, splice it all up with some nice music. And it, yeah, those are my favorite stuff to do just because I love getting like all the footage back from everybody. Like you get footage back from like six different people. Uh, I couldn't I couldn't pinpoint like my favorite of all time, all time. I, <laughs> I don't know. All time, all time. I remember those old, uh, I used to love the Budweiser commercials when I was a kid. Oh, <laughs> yeah, those were great. <laughs> those were always good. Did you really did getting you... the kids into Budweiser back in the day? <laughs> <laughs> they were very funny. Remember the bullfrog? Yeah. The Budweiser bullfrog was the great. The bullfrogs were great. Like, if I had to pick one of all time, probably those old school, like, during football or basketball season, Budweiser ads are always the most fun. Yeah, yeah, those are so great. I, I, I have a picture of one, or a picture of mine of, of one with uh, these two um, uh, ladies yelling at each other, uh, what's up? Do you remember that one? Yeah, that's a classic. <laughs> the what's up is oh, a classic. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think they were both in two massive Jeeps and they just like keep going back and forth, like what's up, what's up? But anyhow. Your commercials seem to be the most fun to make if I had to look. I mean, I've never made one, but watching a beer commercial, it seems like it's the most fun. 
it's yeah. really like any end of the spectrum can go. You can do it serious. You can go patriotic. You can go funny. I mean, mm -hmm. everyone loves beer. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, because <laughs> a lot of a lot of audiences there. Yeah, get me started on beer. <laughs> All right. Well, um, so uh, how to start building high converti converting video ads? Um, what can we expect to learn from you guys today? Well, uh, we're gonna kind of talk about a couple things we do, a couple performance metrics within Ads Manager that we like to focus in on when uh, judging video performance. And then ultimately, we're going to give you a bunch of tips and tricks of how to make some great creative with, you know, kind of like I said earlier, I have this philosophy of what's within arm's reach. So, you know, if you have the ability to get a bunch of equipment and a big set and a big crew, that's great. But if you don't have the ability to do all that stuff, uh, there's still so much potential for you to build high performing creative. So we're going to give you some insights on how to do that. And it's going to be fun. Yeah. Awesome. Sounds great. Well, I will hop into the control room. But uh, thank you both so much for Thanks taking the time today. I really appreciate it. I know all of our merchants are appreciating your time as well. So uh, take it away. Um, yeah. I'll hop into the control room. Great. Thanks for having us. Uh, cool. Thank you. Uh, let's see here. So I'll probably should start sharing the screen. Yeah. Let's Sounds see. like a good plan. Here we go. We're doing it. Welcome everybody to the creative masterclass, how to start building high converting video ads. Uh, yeah, let's continue. Let's get into it. Uh, this it's is us. us. <laughs> I like this picture of me. Uh, I, I, do. I also like the one that was on the landing page that I'm sure everybody that signed up for this got to see. That was a great photo. I'm of not a fan of that picture, but you know, it's easy to use. <laughs> All right, this is us, Stacy and Sean. Nice to meet everybody. Uh, cool. Yeah, so here's a little bit of stuff about Mute6, the company that we uh, both currently work for. We are an iProspect company. Um, I won't go through and read all of this to you. Uh, we don't need to do any popcorn reading here today, but um, if you feel interested, we're awesome. <laughs> Definitely check out our website. Um, we got a couple cool accolades over here. Um, and uh, yeah, we have a bunch of, we're on the creative team there, but we also have, uh, you know, Facebook management teams. We have Google, SEO, email. Um, what else? Gosh, there's so much going on there. I know I'm missing. We have a whole graphic design department, programmatic, yeah. a one-stop shop for all of your kind of internet advertising needs. We've even recently started dabbling in some television commercials with our larger production team. So uh, definitely check us out if you've never heard of us before. Uh, go to our website. A lot of cool stuff going on there. Can't speak highly enough of our company. Oh, uh, yeah. 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 Oh, I got ahead of us, but here are all the things that we do. Um, you know, uh, I, I think I nailed all of them. Ah, oh, Pinterest, Snapchat, TikTok. Pinterest and TikTok, okay. yeah, mm -hmm. that, that last slide. We do a lot. So, and these are all the things that our company does. And today specifically, Sean and I are gonna be focusing on creative and more specifically the direct response creative. So that would be your, you know, Facebook, Instagram. Um, video. The, yeah, video creative for that. Cool, let's continue. All right, this is what we'll be covering today. Uh, what a thumb stop, what is a thumb stop and why it's important? How to utilize organic looking content to your advantage? What KPIs to focus on to measure your performance? How to develop a creative testing strategy? And then we can answer some questions after that. Um, so Woo! we're gonna start with a thumb stop. I do want to see if anybody, let's see. Base, uh, oh, okay, they got a poll going. Okay. Bands, I kind of want to ask people if they know what a thumb stop rate is, but let's see. Should we do that? We should do it. Does okay. anyone know what a thumb stop rate is? Let's see. Let's see in the chat. What do we see in here? Mm -hmm. Oh, there's people. There's a lot of people from different places. That's exciting. Anyone in the chat want to guess what a thumb stop rate is? Oh, oh. No, I just see people, hello from Hawaii, hello from LA. All right, well, don't worry you guys because we're gonna tell you. <laughs> and it's fitting that we start with thumb stop rate in this presentation because it is the first thing that anyone should think about and focus on when putting together a video to use uh, to run an ads manager. 
So uh, a thumb stop rate, if you look at this middle section here, is your three second video views divided by your impressions. This is not a metric that exists in Ads Manager. It's something you have to kind of pull on your own. But if you divide those three second video views by the impressions, you'll end up getting a percentage. And what this tells you is a percentage of people that stopped on your ad, even if just for three seconds. And now think about how important that is. Um, right. You know, I think there's something on here that says, the average Facebook or Instagram user scrolls through 300 new feet of newsfeed daily. That's a lot of different things that you're seeing that your ad needs to stand out in. And you can spend a lot of time building a really nice, beautiful ad that answers all the questions and explains your product really well. But if people aren't stopping on it, the rest of the ad doesn't matter. So right. the first thing that we always like to tell people to focus on is look at your thumb stop rates. Um, get this percentage and try to be getting somewhere in the, you know, at least 20s. I think, Sean, what are your kind of benchmarks for uh, 20s, 20 percent, anything in the 20 to 30 percent is eh, it's all right. It, it'll do uh, 30 is good. 40 is great. And then with the rare occurrence, you'll get those 50 percenters and even close some of them, the higher 50s. And you're, those are just you'll want to just keep reusing those over and over. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so those are kind of the, the benchmarks you're looking for. I kind of think if you have a thumb stop on an ad that's in a single digit percent, if you have something that's a 7% thumb stop, uh, that's almost not really worth even putting spend behind. And I would probably immediately start looking to make changes or try to up that. Um, you know, a simple way to think about that is out of every 100 people this ad is being fed to, only seven of them are even stopping for three seconds, right. and 93 of them are just scrolling straight through. So right. definitely try to up those thumb stops. Um, great. Uh, yeah, and then we're gonna talk about a couple different examples here of uh, ways that you can do that, if we wanna hop to the next yep. thing here. Uh, pay attention, the thumb stop. Cool, so thumb stop. Right. Uh, this is an example of why this can matter. This is the first three seconds of a video that we made for this wonderful product called Spongel, which is a body wash infused buffer, which is so cool. It's a buffer that already has soap inside of it. All you have to do is get it wet and squeeze it and the soap comes out. Very exciting product. Um, this video we made, we made two versions of it. The entire video is, exa is exactly the same and you can even see the opening text here is exactly the same but one of them started on this woman's face talking about it, and one of them started on a hand squeezing the sponge. Uh, you know, I would let you guess which one did better, but I think we accidentally already revealed the answer here. <laughs> <laughs> we gave but, it away. Uh, version A definitely did better, and um, not only did it have a 12% higher thumb stop rate than B, but that led into it getting a 28% higher click-through rate than the other one and an overall 24% lower CPA. So just by changing those first three seconds of the video to get a higher thumb stop rate, all the rest of the metrics started suddenly looking better. Um, so this is a good example of why. Uh, Sean, do you want to take us through yeah, some of the Sorry, I mean to cut you off there. <laughs> uh, different styles. Now, this isn't just these five. Uh, we'll get into that here for uh, so we can do expressive faces like excited. Uh, Stacy did a nice uh, experiment for someone when she was explaining why expressive faces were good, and she held like a, her product up and it was just kind of like a smile. And then there, there was like pumped, like she's excited, like ah, like it you can see it as soon as you and there she is on the left anyway. <laughs> You can see it. You can just tell just by looking at it why these expressive faces do well. Uh, pets or kids, that's a gimme. Uh, bizarre or shocking. I like fire. I like burning stuff for my thumb stop sometimes. I know you can't always do that from home, but if you yeah, get a little... can't tell, but that's Sean holding that uh, money right there. And burning. <laughs> that's, uh, he, that was his idea, and he was very excited about that. And you know it worked really well. <laughs> yeah, it did. Uh, interesting demo is always good and satisfying i would even argue that the squeezing is a nice satisfying the sponge yeah out. good it's like good you too. know if you're pouring something uh mm -hmm. we have another client that's a wine company and we do nice pour shots of the wine into a glass this and satisfying factory footage i love factory right now yeah. but 
a time lapse of factory footage of something being built is super nice and you know satisfying to watch. And yeah, just to touch on expressive faces again, this is one of my favorite things to point out. Let me find a random item on my desk to use to show you. Uh, we'll use this lotion bottle. Um, so kind of the thing about expressive faces is you see a lot of people smiling in your newsfeed, right? You see a lot of vacation photos or, you know, people wanting to show off something new they bought or whatever when you're scrolling through a newsfeed. So you're probably seeing a lot of these. A lot of smiling. But something that really tends to stand out is shock that really like shocked, excited. Um, I try to open my eyes as wide as I can and open my mouth really big. Like I'm really shocked about what's happening. And look at the difference if you can see my video and this wonderful bottle of lotion I have. Look at the difference between this and this. You know, one of those is gonna be a little bit more exciting to stop on. So when yeah. you have three seconds to capture people's attention, that's a good place to start. Yep. Agree. And again, these five are just, they aren't even like, these are probably the top five we use. There's so many more. You can experiment with it. It's generally what I'll do. Like if I see something that's somewhat interesting, I might throw it in there. And some of those have come back with some of the, like, that's where I've gotten some of these 50% thumb stops. There was one where we were doing like an overhead shot of just cooking and uh, they had poured eggs into a pan and then we just kind of did a zigzag. And I was like, hey, do that again. Why not? Let's just see. And that one got well over 50% just doing a zigzag and the wet eggs on a pan. Like, I would have never guessed that. So it is good to kind of test your thumb stops, which I think we're about to get into. Here. Yeah, we'll get into that. But these are a good place to start. I also do see in the chat, I just to remind everyone in case um, you missed it, we're moving kind of fast. Uh, the way that you find a thumb stop rate is you take your, um, can you go backwards, Sean, so we can yeah, go to that guy there and show that. I think some people missed it. But the way that you find your thumb stop rate is you take your three second video views and you divide it by your impression. Oops, sorry. Um, yeah. So video, three second video views divided by impressions. It does not exist in Ads Manager, but the three second video views and the impressions does exist in Ads Manager. So those are things you can find and you can figure this out on your own. All right, let's see here. Cool. Uh, yeah, next step, thumb stoppy text. Um, so you can go through these. There's different styles for these. So the visual, like you saw with the other one where we kept the same text, uh, we, we kind of figured you can kind of test both of those. Like sometimes we'll do like four different videos that are all essentially the same video. And I might do two different visuals with two different um, opening texts right and with those texts like headers or whatever it is they can be a relatable plot problem like sick of messy kitchens well our answer is you know this kitchen cleaner whatever that may be uh, always losing your keys that's the problem salute and then hit them with the solution in the sales sequence here's a uh, you know a pager for your keychain whatever it may be a uh, sloganeering sloganeering is like uh phrases that sound powerful but you can't really disagree with it like stop paying for a label i used many times for like a, a company that was kind of like uh leaning into its generic kind of like money saving because we aren't you know we're not crest we're not selling egos we're selling our own brand of stuff so stop paying for a label vegans deserve protein too like nobody can really disagree with those things and that's a nice aggressive and you know attention grabbing hey i'm a vegan i do deserve protein let's mm -hmm. see what this ad has to say uh desirable situation like this is a game changer i'm literally obsessed like someone having a great time those expressive faces are kind of lean into that uh reviews and quotes are huge you'd be surprised how many times uh just taking an uh, opening header or opening copy and throwing some quotes around it uh, makes a difference it's huge it's kind of crazy so you can do this is like a swiss army knife for kitchens but if you if like the new york times said that or something you're going to want to attribute it to them it's gonna yeah use your use your quotes those are always really fun if you have good quotes too um even you can find this stuff in reviews of your products uh, I live inside mm -hmm. of product reviews and even comments on Facebook. Yeah. And uh, I look for those little things. You know, someone might say, this is like the Swiss army knife of, for kitchens. And I would have never thought of that, but someone said it and it's amazing and it's relatable and everyone knows what that means and can kind of, you know, figure out how cool this product is. So yeah, reviews are great for that. Reviews and quotes are really cool to use. Uh, facts and useful information. Now this is kind of like a, almost a now this video kind of style where it's like, hey, did you know that it takes 
Oh, what was one I did? I worked for a comforter that sold, or I worked for a company that sold comforters that weren't down. So it takes something like, I had to look it up, something like 70 geese to create one <laughs> down comforter. Like it's a crate, like those little stats, people go, oh, okay. And then you can boom, hit them with the sales sequence right after that. That's yeah, kind of fun fact, when people feel like they're learning something too, you know, then they can definitely feel like they're benefiting from not just being sold a product, but also learning a fact in kind of the process of it. So again, kind of like the visual examples we showed on the previous slide, this is not all of the things that you can use for your uh, text or your thumb stoppy text, but these are a few good starting points or a few good jumping off points. And of course, there's a million other directions that you can go from here. Uh, but these are some of our favorites and these are some good, easy places to start. Yeah, uh, cool. Let's keep going. How to utilize organic looking content to your advantage. I can't preach this enough. It's it's tough to even convince brands of this sometimes. So, yeah, this is a really exciting. Um, you know, we were kind of talking about this uh, with Hans too before this when we were talking about when was the first camera invented and stuff like that. And I, I did cheat. I looked up the answer to that because I don't know because I'm not a photographer. <laughs> but. <laughs> But what I do is I make these really cool ads and I utilize organic looking footage. And the cool thing about that is, you know, everyone has a smartphone these days, or not everyone, I should say, but you know, most people have a smartphone and smartphones have good cameras. And, you know, a lot of people, because they're on Instagram or Facebook or TikTok or whatever it is, are pretty experienced in making something well, that they, looks okay. You they're know? so they're so good at using like good cameras and giving it to the general masses that don't know much about like camera work. You know what I mean? So like you don't have to know what an f stop is or anything like that, and your 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 shots are still going to look great. Yeah. Plus, the second part of this is not only is it easy to capture and everyone can kind of do it, but it looks exactly like the stuff that's in a news feed. When mm -hmm. you see something that's super, super polished and it's perfectly lit and perfectly edited and the sound quality is amazing and everything about it looks perfect, your brain actually tells you within a second, this is an ad, I'm gonna keep going. Yep, but 100%. if you see something, you know, like this uh, example picture of this woman holding a cookie where the lighting's a little, you know, not perfect, that looks real to you. That to you, your brain's going to say, is something funny going to happen? Is this a friend of mine that's going to tell me something? So you get a better chance of getting people to, you know, stop and stick around and see what's up. If it looks too polished, it can actually hurt your performance. Yeah. And like Sean was saying earlier, this can be a very um, difficult thing to convince if you have, you know, a lot of you are probably uh, smaller brands watching this. If you have some sort of a creative director, someone that really wants to elevate the brand, we do want to specify that we're not taking away from the brand at all. We're just trying to make native looking content to fit into a feed in an organic way. So you can do this by starting with this organic looking content and then maybe throughout the video 15, 20 seconds in kind of starting to steer it towards some more high level stuff. Or you can definitely up your, you know, production value and your branding on your landing pages, on your websites, but uh, definitely having some really strong, too professional branding in ads can sometimes hurt you. So organic looking content really, really works. I think um, a, I, I think a lot of people here have like their, own, I would hope in the chat has their own kind of shop here. It seems like by the poll. So hopefully <laughs> take what we say. I'm telling you, using your phone will you can do so much with, you can do anything you need with your phone with this kind of stuff. So I think, yeah, one of my favorite things on here as well, this photo all the way to the right of this product, it's called a boot buddy in a Christmas stocking, um, was not really planned. Uh, we were taking photos to include in like a larger slideshow or some sort of, you know, video of like, you know, get this stocking stuff or whatever. And this single still image, that you can see is not lit correctly. There's shadows all over the place in the background. There's a bunch of stuff kind of messy in the frame. You can't even entirely tell what the product is right away by looking at it. We didn't do any photo retouching, no Lightroom, didn't add text to it. Just took this single photo from a cell phone camera roll and ran it as a static ad and it got like a 4X or something crazy. I think it might've been higher than that. So this is a really exciting example of it felt native to the feed. 
uh, people related to it, people were curious about it, and it had a great performance. Cool. Cool. Wow, this is this is me at home and something that I didn't intend to share with so many people. You can see me in my nice pajama pants there. <laughs> But uh, this is kind of this thing. I assume for, that's what you're wearing right now. Yeah, you know what? I'm I'm not wearing pajama pants right now. I'm wearing jean shorts. I swear, uh, <laughs> it's hot. It's too hot for pajama pants. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you true. know, here's the here's the cool thing that we were kind of just talking about. You know, smartphones shoot in 4K. Not even that you need it, but you don't need a fancy camera to be getting some cool content. Everyone's an Instagram photographer, or TikTok influencer these days. And there's really cool ways to get creative with different products. Um, this is an example of an electrolyte supplement we worked with. And you, like we said, you know, this is me in my pajama pants at my kitchen counter. Uh, that light that I have, um, I had from building puzzles. It's a light I bought for puzzles because you could bend it over the table that I now use sometimes when I film. It was $30 on Amazon. So you don't need even professional lighting equipment and it felt a little bit too bright. So that is a napkin that I taped to it to make a little bit of makeshift diffusion there to make it a little bit less harsh on the product. And then just utilizing the slow-mo effect on my iPhone, I filmed this kind of cool shot of me dumping this powder into this glass of water. It was very thumb stoppy. And then in you know post-production, we added a little bit of text to this and as simple as that, me by myself with my phone and this puzzle lamp, we're able to make an uh, ad that, um, you know, performed pretty great. Yeah. Uh, so we got some questions here oh. in the chat. Uh, are we permitted to encourage engagement in the ad? Something like, do you know a boss who should outfit their employees in this? That kind of stuff. Uh, yeah, I've done it in the past. Uh, you do run the line of it feeling a little clickbaity. Uh, but I've had ads where it works in the past, like, I did like a, I had like a furniture ad I had to do and um, it was like tag a friend that needs to relax and all the shots where people were like you relaxing in this this couch that they were selling and it worked. I mean, that that version worked. A lot of people were tagging their friends like, yo, you work too much, you know, that kind of stuff. I like that stuff if you can get it to work. Uh, and but sometimes some people will skip right over because it it's like, oh, yeah, we've we've seen this kind of tag your friend kind of thing. Uh, but it's 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 good to test. I would test it. Yeah, always worth a try. And you can test stuff like that and add copy as well, too, if you don't want to go full into the video with it. But uh, yeah, I we definitely I think the answer there is we don't discourage it. So, uh, you know, we've we've seen some ways that it doesn't doesn't work, but it's definitely something to try. So that's a great idea. And you're you're thinking in the right track here. Right. I see another question about this light and this this yeah. uh, phone tripod again, not professional filming quality light at all. It is a $30 light from Amazon that I got because it bends and I wanted, I was getting very serious about puzzles when this whole uh, kind of quarantine thing started. <laughs> <laughs> but it's actually a really cool light. It's super cheap. It's flexible. You know, you can put it in a bunch of different places and bend it to a bunch of different places. And then it also has settings on it where you can change the light temperature. So it can feel a little bit, you know, I don't know how familiar everyone is with kind of lighting but there's a difference between daylight or tungsten or what might more commonly be seen as like daylight is that bluer light and tungsten is that more yellowish oranger light that you would see like this light behind me is tungsten, this like orangish looking thing. And then the light coming from this window in front of me, that's bluish, that's the daylight. So you can find stuff like that for not very expensive um, that gives you the option to do that kind of stuff. And then that uh, camera tripod, Again, I think I bought on Amazon for like $12 and you can just mount your phone to it. And what I love about that thing is I call it the octopus tripod because those little legs bend and you can wrap it around things. Yeah. I think I might have it next to me and I'd love to show it. Aha. My you have to send a fun. link to the chat. Yeah, this guy right here. What's cool about it is its legs bend so um, I, I used to work for a brand that did hair dye and we would often wanna film people at home using this at home hair dye, but it's never a fun angle when you set your camera or your phone down on your you know kitchen sink and it's looking up at you and you're kind of looking down and the lights above you. So you have shadows on your face and it's just kind of an unattractive angle. And then you can't really see the top of your head, which is 
the part you want to see getting dyed. So I found that this thing, this little $12 magical device, um, you can, I would wrap it around a hanger and then hang the hanger on the light that was above my bathroom sink mirror. So then instead of getting this, um, you know, down below you from the kitchen sink footage, I was getting footage from above you. The angle looking up into a camera is always a little bit better. The lighting is better because the light's coming from above you. And then you could also see, I could show off the top of my head to the camera as well. So that's just one example of how this thing is just like the most magical little tool but um, I love it. Definitely, definitely get oh, one. Great. They dropped a link in the chat. Good. Um, another question, apps that you would recommend for pulling together video, or photos, text, and video to create good ads. Uh, if you have a Mac, iMovie is like the easiest thing you can do to throw things together. Uh, it's pretty uh, user-friendly. And like, if you need any sort of help with that, YouTube, like just YouTube, like, Beginner's tutorial iMovie and it'll just like you'll be able to just slap some text on there and then you can start getting better and better with the editing stuff as well. Um, I paid 100 bucks for those tripods. No, you don't need to spend $100 on the tripods. No, no, no. Oh, no. <laughs> we got more questions, but let's keep going and we can answer some more as we go. Yeah, we. I would love to get into when I just reach this, reach for this guy. I actually have a full basket next to me of, you know, at home filming equipment that's all $30 or under. So maybe if we have time during Q&A at the end, I can show off oh, some nice. weird phone mounts. Um, cool. Best practices for D, of DR video. Uh, keep it simple and to the point. But most, yeah, this is very important, but mostly ex important, exciting info first, the ooh factor, the stuff that people may care about, hit that at the beginning of your uh, sales sequence there and design it so that like someone that's watching without their sound understands what's going on. So if someone's talking, add some subtitles and the subtitles don't need to be exact. They can just be hitting the main points. You know what I mean? So like a lot of people, I scroll on my phone without sound on all the time. I see it and I can start reading. Oh, I get what's going on in this ad. They, so always kind of watch your ad without any sound after you're done and see if it makes sense. It's great. Keep it engaging throughout the video or viewers will keep scrolling. Don't make ads that are too long for the sake of adding in every. Yeah, you do not need to add every single value prop into these things. Uh, what tends to you can you can add them. Those are what we call like evergreen, where we kind of give a nice broad vision of the product. But I, I love getting into specifics, like what's the single, what is the main problem a lot of these people have or the customer may have and how do we hit it? How does this product fix that, right? Yeah, a single in on, you know, one good value prop and just keep hitting that over and over. You definitely don't need to include every single thing that your, you know, product could solve all in one video. If there's time, then there's time, um, but you know, uh, sometimes it feels a little bit too salesy and can right. help us a little and bit. And then you're starting to add variables in that that may or may not be helping or not helping. And it's tough to know as you're testing when it's like that broad. So what you can do is you can kind of like start going real specific with your sales sequence and get one that works. And then now we'll go through a different direction with a different sales sequence. Then you find what works there. Then you can combine those two that do work. And you already know those two work and you can kind of mix and match. And we'll get into like Frankensteining your videos later. But I think I think that's a good way of going about it. Uh, yeah, this is a big one. I always argue with people uh, I, more than I would think. No <laughs> slow fade ins at the beginning of your ad. Uh, it's just going to be a blank screen. Uh, people are like no, no, dramatic. Fade yeah, this in. is actually a nice, um, really, really helpful tip to think about. Is that a lot of people when they're scrolling through ads on their phone. Um, they use cellular data instead of Wi-Fi. Imagine you're out, you're walking around, you know, you're in between places or you forget, heaven forbid, to turn your Wi-Fi on. Uh, and then you really mess up your data for the month, like I do constantly. But if you're using cellular data, what happens when you're scrolling through a news feed on Facebook or Instagram is sometimes it takes a second or two to load or even just a half second, a fraction of a second to load something. And instead of it sitting on the thumbnail that you have the ability to choose, it sits on the first frame of a video for even just like half a second before it loads. And imagine if that first frame of your video is a blank screen 
or it's plain black, because you're planning on it to have a dramatic fade in, you've already lost half your audience right there because they don't want to sit around. Right. So even if you have a really exciting text treatment where you have animated text coming in and cool transitions throughout the video, ignore that in the first three seconds, start every ad you make with a visual on screen and the text already there. There's no I, time to waste to have that animated and have the I wanna, on Yeah, there. with DR videos online, I, I like to, like, you want to be as blunt and in your, like, there's no room for subtlety in DR marketing. It's just, you just need to hit them with this. It's, it almost seems too, like, you're cheating when you're just like, it seems easy to just throw in what what's good about this product. No, no, that, like, hit them over the head with it and don't, no subtlety is needed. Seriously. Especially yeah. these slow fade ins. Uh, don't make it be exactly as on the nose as you think. Um, yep. Yep. We, we, I love using uh, food examples when I talk about things. Sure. We'll get to that in a second here when we talk about iterations and well, burgers. That's what, what we're all passionate about. Uh -huh. We're all passionate. Everyone speaks the language of food. Um, but I like to think about, you know, um, direct response ads in the grand scheme of advertising are the fast food of advertising. And I don't mean this in a bad way. I love fast food and fast food is a multi-million dollar industry. It feeds a lot of people. Um, you know, you might think of Super Bowl TV commercials as like the fine dining of the advertising industry. That's probably going to be a very expensive thing that you spend months and months preparing. Um, it's, you know, everything's plated with tweezers and just looks perfect. But direct response ads, this is for the people that are starving. They want to give you $2 and they want you to give them a burrito out the window of this drive through. So yeah. that, that's what we're doing here when you're throwing stuff at people in their news feed, put all the important stuff up front and don't feel like you're being too quick or dramatic and like getting too aggressive. That's what's needed. That's how this works. Yep. Uh, it goes without saying, don't make it boring. Uh, and the text, this one's a big one I have to do with a lot of editors is like, leave that, re read your text to yourself as you're watching the slide and don't cut, but until you you can read it one point, yeah, one and a half to two times. Uh, it's a big thing. Yeah, uh, especially if you've read the text a couple times, you probably are starting to read it a little bit quicker. So a nice thing too is, you know, try to be able to read it one and a half or two times before it moves on. Or what I do is I just show it to a friend, anyone that's nearby, coworker or not coworker, roommate, boyfriend, whatever. I'll sometimes just if someone that's never seen it before, I'll show it to them and be like, hey, can you read this? And then if they say yes, then that's great. And if they say no, then I'm like, ah, I made it too fast. Yeah. I know what the words are, but they don't. Some Yeah. After you stare at it for a while, sometimes it's tough to tell because it's like you already know what it's saying. So it's good to show show people. Uh, what was the question? I just missed it. Do phone apps that, add, no, not that one. What do you suggest for get, to get audio? All the ones I found are crazy expensive to get good audio for ads. So when you ask for good audio, are you just talking about like people speaking? Because uh, if that's the case, again, uh, like that organic feel will go a long way just using like what's on your phone, someone speaking into their phone. I know it sounds like, oh, they're in a room. That's okay. It feels like, you know, someone on your feed is sharing a video with you. Um, yeah, and again, I think Sean mentioned earlier too. Um, a lot of a lot of people are watching these ads with sound off. I think somewhere around seventy percent of people watch Facebook and Instagram ads without the sound on. People are scrolling without sound on. You know, if they find something they like, they might turn it on. But in general, just the scrolling is soundless. So uh, I kind of, you know, my response to that would be: don't even think too much about the audio. Uh, you don't want to waste a lot of time buying expensive audio tracks or trying to cut together perfect sounding sound clips and audio bites when over half the people are never going to hear it anyway. As long as you make sure that the text on screen is displaying what people are saying very clearly, then you're kind of all set. <laughs> right. Uh, I need sound to show the product. I would love to know what product that is. Is it like a whoopee cushion or something? <laughs> what is a good sounding product? I'm trying to think. A piano? I need sounds to show the product. Oh, now I just, I want to do a poll of what product we all think this is. Um, <laughs> if you want to tell us, Diana M, what your product is, uh, we would love to- Oh, it's a wallet. Oh. Ah, sound for wallet. Huh. Maybe we can get into this towards the end because I'd love to dive, dive into this more. A slim uh, leather wallet. Yeah, okay, hold on to that. Yeah, um, now I've, you, you've piqued my interest. I'm very fascinated in in the slim leather wallet that needs sound. Um, huh. 
Oh, I will answer this next question though, really quick before we move on. Um, how do you deal with music licensing? Should you only use royalty free music? Yes, 1000% yes. It is 10 times better to just not have music in your ad at all than it is to use music that you don't have a license to because you're putting advertising spend behind it that opens you up to a lawsuit. And um, you know, you might think, ah, there's so much on the internet, no one's ever gonna find it, no one will ever know if I use this song that I found on, you know, uh, Spotify by this tiny artist, whatever, but there's algorithms now. So definitely either use royalty free music or don't use music at all if you can't afford to get royalty free music. It's a way better bet than trying to sneak in um, you know, music you don't have the rights to. Um, let's keep going. Oh, looks like a re repeat slide. Slide this guy. Okay. okay, what KPIs to focus on to measure performance? Now, this will be a, like a brief section, but we can kind of go over this. Uh, these are just like this is the funnel that you kind of want to start going through. Uh, you want to hit them, catch them first with your thumb stop. You're opening three seconds. Uh, then you'll that'll lead into your click through rate. Uh, you can you don't need to have add to cart on here to really review it, but it does help with this. Uh, and then into purchase. So like say your thumb stop rate is uh, is low and your click through rate is low and your purchase rate is low. Well, first thing I would do is let's change the thumb stop. Let's get the thumb stop up. Now the thumb stop rate is up. Uh, click through rate is still down. That's going to be an issue in my uh, experience. Most of the time is with your sales sequence or the thumb stop is too unrelated to what you're selling. Like you can make a catchy intro if you want that has nothing to do with your your product. That's that'll get people to stop, but it still needs to tie in to your sales. Right. I don't, I don't know what everyone else's kind of general news feed scrolling looks like, but I follow a lot of um, you know people falling off skateboards and and kind of channels like that. I don't know what that says about me. We don't have to talk about that now, sure. but. Uh, you could easily put, you know, someone getting kicked in the crotch as the beginning of every video you make, <laughs> and it would have a really high thumb stop rate. But if that doesn't directly relate to your product, then all you do is have a high thumb stop rate, and then 10 seconds later, everyone's gone from the video. So thumb stop rates being high just for the sake of being high isn't helpful. You do want them to be related to the product. You do want them asking a question that you're answering with that sales. Oh, and I don't know if we uh, necessarily discussed what a sales sequence is, but just to break that down in case um, you aren't aware, uh, when Sean says sales sequence, that's kind of the way you display your information after your thumb. Uh -oh. So think about a beginning and middle and end of one of these short 20 to 30 second DR ads. The beginning would be your thumb stop or your hook. How do you get people in? And then the sales sequence would be the meat of it. That's, you know, the value props you have, how you show the value props, how you show why your product's unique, and then the order that they go in. So, you know, trying to define those moments, um, which things are most important, which order you might want to display them in. That mm -hmm. could be something to work on in your sales sequence. And then, you know, the ending of your video, your CTA, your call to action, you know, whether it's learn more, click here, whatever. That's kind of your beginning, middle, end of a video. Right. So yeah, say your thumb stop, then say your thumb stop rate is high, your click through rate is high, but your add to cart or your purchase isn't coming through. Then I would start leaning towards like your landing page, your website nights needs to be kind of tweaked a little bit, if that makes sense. The add to cart, you don't really need to have. It is good to have just to see like, oh, this many people is considering it. And then you can use that is in, in remarketing if you want because these people are really considering it. The big three are thumb stop, click through rate, and then your your results, your purchase, your app install, whatever it is. And uh, from there, if you can, you, it's, it's really rough. There's other ones that can help aid this, other little stats, but these are the big three or four that you can look at and kind of go, where is my ad breaking down? Why isn't it working? Where isn't it working? And you can kind of address it that way. Um, there's a couple too. I think there's like a percent viewed if you want to get really nitty gritty about, yeah. um, you know, at what point in your sales sequence things might be off. You can watch like I think there's a 10 second view and then there's like a percent completed or like how much you watch. I love I love average time watched. Um, and that's so that'll one. give you your 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 number. So it'll be like seven seconds. And I go, OK, what's happening at my seven second mark? Now, that could mean people are just clicking at seven seconds. It doesn't mean they're turning it off, but it, it's it's a mixture of both probably. Right. Yeah. I can give you a good um, little anecdotal instance as to why looking at these specific performance metrics helped uh, solve a problem once. Uh, I had a 
client and that was very focused on just looking at uh, ROAS and CPA. ROAS and CPA, that's all they looked at, ROAS and CPA, right? So we made a video for them that I felt fairly confident in and it the ROAS wasn't great, the CPA wasn't great. And they were like, it doesn't work. The video is terrible, terrible ROAS, terrible CPA, terrible video, doesn't work. And me sitting there not liking to fail at things was like, I don't know about that. I was very confident in this video, let's take a look. And I started breaking down these metrics. And then I saw a killer thumb stop rate. And I was like, okay, I'm already a little bit confused why right. uh, you know, a great thumb stop rate might not be uh, you know, getting great CPAs, but whatever. Uh, and then I looked and it had a really good click through rate, a very high click through rate. A lot of people are clicking in. So now I'm like, all right, people are stopping on this ad. People are clicking through to this ad. And then I looked at add to cart and the add to cart was next to zero. Huh. And I was like, this is fascinating. So the video is performing well. People are clicking through to the landing page, but no one's adding anything to the cart. So I went on a, um, oh, what's it called when you go on a, a browser that's clear? Why can I not think of that term right now? Incognito. Where am I? Right now. <laughs> I was like, what is the term? Yeah. Uh, I went on an incognito browser so that it didn't have any of like, you know, me going to this website memorized. And I clicked through from the ad to the landing page. And then I tried to add the product to the cart. And when I hit add to cart, it froze, did like a weird glitch thing, and then took me back to the main part of the landing page. So by breaking down these, and then we were able to tell them that, and they went back to their web developer and realized that it was a very serious problem. And that tons of people that were getting there were not able to add the product to cart. You would have to refresh like six times in order to get it to work. And by then most people give up. So by breaking down these metrics and not just, you know, throwing a video out there and uh, hoping that it's going to get a good, you know, really low CPA or really great ROAS. Um, actually breaking down these metrics can really, really inform you on where video performance or where the part of this kind of purchase funnel things are breaking down in. So that's a nice little anecdote there of how this stuff oh, works. That's interesting. Uh, yeah. So people are asking like what a ROAS is. That's your return on ad spend. Uh, that's a stat that we look at for like, uh, just how much, like Facebook kind of does it on the front end of how much you're spending and how much you're getting back per purchase. And then for the one I like is CPA, which is your cost per acquisition or cost per action, whatever it is. Uh, and that's just how much it costs in advertising spend to get one sale or one app installed, just in case anybody's wondering there. Yeah, you want you want high ROAS and you want low CPA. Those Those are the goals there. Ooh, yay, the fun part. Testing strategy. Uh, just to give you a little bit of insight on this next part, uh, here's one of my favorite things about Facebook Ads Manager. Uh, it is just a giant pool of data that you have at your fingertips to be able to look at things. Um, unlike traditional you know, television commercials or something like that, where you really have to believe you really have to like, you know, focus group a product or an ad or a commercial and really feel confident about your decisions. And then, you know, you're spending hundreds of thousands of dollars sometimes putting it out there and you have to be confident in that. With Facebook Ads Manager, you have the ability to test multiple things and kind of use Facebook as your own focus group. You know, if an ad doesn't do great, you can pull it, but read the comments on it and see what you can learn from it. See the things you could have done differently or the questions you can answer uh, to make sure that the next attempt at an ad is a little bit better than that. So we're gonna talk about creative testing strategy, which is just the most fun part about what we do. Uh, so you test a bunch of variables, right? So you develop a hypothesis like, okay, so let's say uh, uh, like my generic uh, food company, right? Uh, the hypothesis is the problem that people have is they're spending too much on, on food that they don't need to be spending, right? We got, that's your hypothesis. So how do I, how do I execute that? Okay, so stop paying for a label is what I'm gonna do. And I'm gonna show like their product. That's essentially it. So you can test it. So what I'll do is I'll take five of their products or four of their products and I'll, I'll create four different openers with it and I'll, I'll make one sales sequence and then I'll slap four different openers in it. That's how I'll usually start one of these things. Uh, and we'll test those for, for a few days or a week. However, it depends how much you're spending at the time. And you can kind of look at that and go, okay, people are responding to the stop paying for a label messaging more. Let's go with that. 
but my uh, my click through rate's a little down. So I'm gonna stick with these. Now I'm gonna make four different little tweaks to the sales sequence and do four ads at the same time, all opening with that stop paying for a label, like all the same opener now that we know that opener works. And then I'll do four different little tweaks to the sales sequence. Broaden hypo and that's where I'm broadening my hypothesis here. And then we'll execute again. Boom. Oh, oh, the people are responding to this. So then you can get real. Uh, so I hit them with the, uh, I hope all this is making sense. <laughs> Uh, it's just having a beautiful mind right now. Uh, so I, I wish you had a giant whiteboard to be writing all of this down on. <laughs> so my my stop paying for a label, we've proven has worked. My opening intro with, we'll say, like my olive oil opener or whatever it is, right? That's my visual. And now I've configured out the sales sequence that has worked, started working. And now I can start scaling. And now you can make even more granular, smaller changes. So I might change header colors. I might change the way copy comes in, right? So you can get real granular with it and start. And you should be Frankensteining together like this quote unquote perfect ad. <laughs> yeah, you can, you can learn the pieces kind of like that example we showed earlier with. Um, thank you. you know, the the chat says I was making sense. So thank no, you. you are you. You're making sense. Uh, <laughs> Tiffany, we're here for you. <laughs> Um, I uh, love it. Uh, so that sponge example we used earlier that had, you know, the difference between the whole video is the same, the text was the same, but one was a woman's face being like, this is so cool. And then one was like the hand squeezing the sponge. That also what it does for you is it kind of like informs future decisions that you're going to make. That moment for us, it was so significantly better to show this sponge being squeezed, kind of led us down this path of, all right, we don't need people talking about this. Let's just go film a hundred different sponge squeezes. Let's get every color of sponge. Yep. Let's get, you know, bathtub, sink, different versions of water you can squeeze it under. Once we knew that that sponge being squeezed was kind of the winning thing, then we were able to kind of like double down on that and just get into that. I and it might sound really silly that we would spend that much time on just the opening three seconds of something, but um, like you could see in those kind of performance metrics from those examples of videos, it really does matter. And those so three I, seconds I had a similar experience long. with that comforter uh, company that I worked with. And so we hit them with four <laughs> openers. Uh, one was like kind of tugging on the heartstrings like, hey, it takes 70 geese to uh, create one down comforter. Stop, quit down, right? I don't know why you're laughing at that. I don't we know. love talking about geese. This okay. is, you brought up geese twice in this presentation. Sorry, this is just the example. Okay, so anyway. I love geese. Uh, I don't like geese, to be honest with you. Uh, so anyway, sorry. Um, so anyway, uh, the four angles we hit at the top. Uh, one was the heartstrings one. One was uh, quit your cotton comforters. Cotton, like, collects all these mites and stuff. That was another angle. Then we hit... Uh, the, our product is cooling, like stop sweating through the night. You know, our product releases heat kind of a thing. And we figured out, oh, people are responding to the temperature messaging. And then you can dive into that temperature messaging, much like you said with the diving into the sponge squeeze. Now we're going to explore several ways of doing this temperature messaging. Like one, we're going to show a guy too hot. One, we're going to show a girl way too cold. The, the big winner that won with us was a Goldilocks is what we call it, where it was like one side is too hot. It was like a split screen of a guy kicking his stuff off and the other side was too cold and uh, uh, and then those would split and then there was just right. You know, we called it the Goldilocks, which is a Goldilocks. I've used that Goldilocks style several times, like to this, to that, right in the middle. It works really well. That's awesome. I also liked your reenactment of the ad in real time. You know, why would we ever need to show examples if Sean can just reenact the sure. ad live on camera here? Great. Um, cool. What other testing things do we have? So are we going to talk about Frankensteining that? Oh, no, we're going to do this first. And then we'll talk about Frankensteining. This is an example of a product called Boot Buddy, which was that thing you saw peeking out of a Christmas stocking earlier. Um, it's a very kind of unusual product. It's basically a little bit, it's a little water bottle thing. You can fill that blue part with water and then you can, it holds the water in, but you can also unscrew the end and then water comes out that brush side. So you can clean off your soccer cleats at the end of a soccer game, instead of trying to like drag them through the grass or hit them together till all the dirt flies off. It was just a super easy way. Um, actually it's a wonderful story. 
a kid in um, on Dragon's Den, which is, I guess, like Britain's version of Shark Tank. Uh, they, uh, a 13-year-old invented this product because he took a brush and taped it to a water bottle so he could squeeze the water while he was using the brush to clean his shoes. And then they invented this product and uh, he ended up getting backing from three of the dragons or sharks or investors or whatever. And it's a great story. So anyway, we're gonna show you this. Um, this first video is something we made actually entirely with the assets that they gave us. This was um, stuff that the client already had on hand that they had shot and collected, their friends using the product, um, just general things. And then we reorganized it and added some text to it uh, to try to help performance. So this is that guy right here. Just to shout, uh, so, so people that aren't, uh, if the chat's not working for you, just refresh or scroll all the way up. Just a heads up for the people in the chat here. Now, I know we said sound doesn't matter, but that song is a banger. <laughs> that song slaps. I don't know who you are. Love it. I don't know if it's I've had, if it's because I've listened to it probably 7,000 times um, while yeah. reworking these ads, but uh, love that jam. Can't get enough of it. So that was kind of our basis, basic starting point. We started there. We took their assets. We kind of put together what we could. Yeah, that was all footage they provided, right, you said? Right. And then there's something right at the end where there's guys playing soccer. And we bought that clip off a super cheap uh, stock video site. I think we paid like 30 bucks for the use of that. And I uh, used it for just a short amount of time. But there's some stock video sites you can use to supplement footage. So this was very, you know, it's half, you know, cell phone footage, half kind of stock video. And we just rearranged it. And then we were able to also use some of that footage from Dragon's Den. And this started performing really well. So then what we wanted to do was kind of show, um, we were like, great, this is working. Let's not reinvent the wheel here, but let's see what else we can do. So we made these two iterations for the next round where most of the video is the same, but we took a guy and a girl and we filmed them and put split screens. So on one side, they're using the cleaner to clean the shoe. And on the other side, they don't have it and they're trying to clean a shoe in the grass or with their hands and it's a whole mess. And then we also did a girl and a boy doing the same exact thing. So we were able to test you know, four things at once. One, we were testing the split screen versus the original opening of the video and then the second thing being a male or female um if you want to play maybe the top one yeah and then from there it's the same exact video everything kind of oh we did update that part where it said the portable shoe cleaner we showed her putting it in the bag and then if you jump to the end i don't want to make everyone rewatch this whole thing everything's exactly the same but then we replaced that kind of out of place stock footage with this girl kicking a ball at the end. So we changed just that opening part and then we swapped in two other clips in places where we had stock to make it feel a little bit more organic. And that was it and ran the same thing. And then this bottom one, very similar to the top video, but has a boy, if you wanna play just the first couple seconds of that. Nice. Same thing where he like can't get it clean and then he does get it clean. And he's super happy. And then we show the portable, it's in the bag and actually cuts this. If you go to the end of that one, he actually did a very cool little soccer trick that. Oh, was wait, look at this. Let's check it out. Oh, very whoa. Cool. whoa. I didn't know he could do that. I know. Very impressive. Bro. It only took him like six tries before we filmed him doing it. <laughs> Uh, we filmed this in the grass outside our office one day. That's my iPhone that filmed this. It was just a super quick, you know, we didn't want to spend a lot of time or money on something because we were curious to see if it was going to work or not. So we're like, let's just do it small scale first, see what happens. Um, what actually happened with this, I think we have the learnings on the next slide, but I'll, I'll kind of spoil the secret here. We learned that the original opener of the video actually did quite a bit better than these split screens and our kind of the thing we deduced from that was that the split screens were a little too busy and it was so far out, you could see the whole body of the person and you weren't focusing right in on the product. If you go back to the first video and just hit play for one second, Sean, and hit pause, 
you can see, look at this. In one second, you don't even need the whole first three seconds. You can see this is a product that cleans your shoes. Dirty shoe on one side, clean shoe on the other side. Um, we also tested a ton of text. Clean boots in 30 seconds was the best. Um, but so we actually learned from this that um, this original thing where it's more up close works a lot better. So then we went back to using that quite a bit. And then we did learn that there was a little bit of a better click through rate with this guy doing his cool soccer tricks. So we started including that in all the videos. So we're kind of taking bits and pieces of everything that we see successful and putting them together. Mm. And then for the kind of next round where we were trying to experiment, we tried just different audiences. So this is another thing you can test and we'll get into this, which is like swim lanes or audiences. But we were like, all right, We've capitalized on soccer players and people that play soccer or football. Sorry, I guess these ads ran um, in Europe, so it's football there and they're not sneakers, they're boots. But uh, but then we were like, what if we can get uh, a golf audience? Um, what if we can say you can clean your golf shoes with this? And then similarly too, we were like, what if we can get children? Because it's a very simple thing to use and a young child invented it. What if we can show that children can use it themselves to clean muddy shoes? So let's check it out. Yeah, let's check it out. Oh, look at that. Clean it. And then it goes right back into that same footage. Right. Um, same. And then towards the end, instead oh. of less time cleaning and more time playing, instead of it being a soccer trick, it's a guy hitting a golf ball. But the entire meat of the video, that whole in between, you know, 20 seconds is exactly the same. We didn't make a whole branded video about golf. We didn't reshoot a bunch of things. We got a couple cell phone clips of a golfer cleaning a golf shoe. And then this bottom one, um, we used kids to try to get uh, that kids market. And this kid adorably says, I clean my shoes all by myself. Yeah. <laughs> um, super cute. And then, yeah, it's kind of the same stuff, except we intertwined a few clips of like the mom cleaning it and the kids cleaning it a little bit more. So it was less adults using it and more kids using it but all the text is the same, you know, all this footage is the same. And we just added in little bits of these kids in there to kind of sell that. So um, this is something, you know, in the lifespan, you got to imagine these are just, we did a bunch of different headers and different texts on them. So this is just five videos out of probably 20 that we experimented with. And this lasted through the span of probably three to five months of us doing a bunch of these iterative tests. There's a, there's a big question here. Oh, there's a big question. Uh, how much ad spend do you use for testing per iteration to get enough data to tell you if it's optimal? Um, so whatever your goal CPA is, I mean, a lot of people have different ways of going about like their, their, their spending strategy. Uh, personally, uh, I'd like to go, whatever my goal CPA is, if I get to half of that spend and I don't have any sales or even like click, if I don't have any clicks or anything, then, uh, then I'll turn it off and try something else. Like if I'm not getting click throughs on on hat and I'm halfway to my my goal CPA, my goal cost per acquisition, and then I'll turn it off and try something else. Uh, you, that's generally my idea. Mo there's so many different theories on how to allocate your spending and stuff. Yeah, I don't I don't think there's a right or wrong answer here. You know, it depends on what your your goals are, what the price point of your product is, how long you want to let things test to. I know um, if you want to just throw a bunch of money behind them right away and get some results within a week or two, you can do that. Or you can put less spend behind them and just kind of wait out. Um, That's generally my my style. I'll generally like I won't spend a lot at the beginning, let it run for three days, look without even touching it. I don't want to touch it for three days generally for me. And then I'll look at it. And if I've hit half my CPA and I hit, or if I'm at my half my CPA and spend and there's no like clicks or anything, that's when I'll turn it off and I'll start tweaking something else. But if there is clicks, maybe we can up the spend a little bit and see what we go from there. But there's so much you, sh you should, that's a whole other uh, webinar. Yeah, that's, everyone. that's, yeah, we're trying to stay focused on just the creative. We could go down a whole other rabbit hole on, on this part. Um, I did see what size and length the videos should be. Mm. Um, that's a great question as well. Um, I would think somewhere. All right. So at least for me, and we'll see if Sean has a different answer, but uh, off the top of my head, uh, 45 seconds, if you're doing like a product intro and introducing something for the first time, 30 to 45 seconds, somewhere around there is going to be the sweet spot. 
Uh, if you're doing some remarketing, retargeting stuff where maybe people have already been introduced to the products and you're just trying to like hit home a couple specific value props, I might shorten it to 20 seconds um, and change up the hook so that they're not thinking they're seeing the same ad, but they're knowing that they're seeing something new. Um, in general, it's very, very rare that I've ever made an ad over a minute long. I think oh, if really? I'm pushing 60, then I'm kind of... I will... <laughs> I did a, I did one that was, uh, we started small and like what you can start getting pretty experimental with how long these ads are, if they're working, that's kind of my idea. Like, yeah, stick to the, I'll even do 15 to 45 seconds for the first round, somewhere around there. But if you get something that's working, you just keep scaling up or new ideas with what's working. Like for one, I had like this, uh, it was a company that was kind of like wish that's not wish. Um, if you're familiar with like face, uh, wish on Facebook. And I was like, 52 re I was like, this, everything we're doing here is working so well. Let's try this. 52 reasons to buy from this company. And all I did was hit them over with a product after product for 52 products. And that thing went on for three minutes and it still did well. So like I was able to get there just by like scaling and scaling and scaling and scaling, but I would never start with something over a minute. Uh, but yeah, I think, I think Stacy's tip is good. I would say 15 to 45 seconds is, is, is prime. Yeah, depending on what you have. And my kind of theory there is to, um, I think you'll probably notice uh, a, a great starting point for anyone kind of diving into ads is start paying attention to the things you stop and look at when you're scrolling through your feed. You know, research is important. Uh, what a fun industry we work in where you get to sit and scroll through Facebook and Instagram all day as part of your job, you know, <laughs> but uh, definitely start paying attention to the things that you find interesting and, you know, that are capturing your attention. I know for myself as a fact, I'm not sticking around on anything for longer than 15 seconds, but it normally only takes me 10 to 15 seconds to be sold to see if I want to click through to the landing right. page because then I'm kind of like, oh, you've caught my interest. Let's find out more. And then I go through to the landing page. So in general, um, I don't like to say, let's keep all the ads that short because some people might not be sold that quickly or they might be like, I don't know, I have some questions. Let's see if they answer some of my questions. So I like to keep in mind that the first 10 to 15 seconds should be enough to hit it home. You should be able to run those 10 to 15 seconds by themselves, by itself as a video and have mm -hmm. it still make sense. And then anything kind of after that is just you answering questions and providing additional value props just in case people don't get sold right away. Right. Yep. Cool. cool. Um, there's a couple other questions, but let's move on and then we can come back to. Some. We will get to these questions. I yes. swear. Just hold uh, it. Once we get to Q&A, please re uh, ask them if we haven't answered yet. Uh, right. So here is, oh, right. This feels like ages ago that we were talking about these videos, but here is the kind of data from these videos. As you can see, that first video had a 28% thumb stop. The ones where we did the split screens were at 18 or 19. So that wasn't really quite as good as what we'd hoped for. So we went back to not using the split screen. And then when we did the kids focus with, um, you know, an organic mom's kind of audience there, the thumb stop with the kids was huge but the CPA and the ROAS weren't quite where we wanted them. And we broke that down to finding out that once you click through, the landing page was still very adult oriented. So we needed to design a custom landing page to uh, speak to the kid audience. Makes sense. And then that helped. Um, and then this golf thing. Wow, golfers love to buy stuff. Golfers are one of my favorite audiences. Man, can if you tell a golfer they need to have something on the golf course, they will buy it because golfers love having all the cool stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, and they have like a sense of humor about themselves. I've oh, noticed, yeah. you know, I, like I, it kind of reminds me of the beer I discussion we were talking about. I recently learned golfing. I went golfing for the first time this year. And the three guys that I went with, every single one of them had like, I mean, they were pulling out, they were like, oh, I have these binoculars that can tell me the distance to the next hole and like, oh, I have an app on my phone with a GPS that can show me where my ball land. Like all this, just everyone had every trinket. And that actually was what inspired me when we were doing these videos. I was like, I bet we could sell these to golfers because just watching these guys be like, oh, I have this, I have this, I have this, and pulling <laughs> all these knickknacks out of their golf bags. And then sure enough, this golf audience uh, worked quite well and people love getting this golf shoe cleaner. Um, cool. So let's go on to the next thing yeah. here. Yes, 
this is, we've talked about it quite a bit, this idea yeah. of Frankensteining your videos, um, kind of taking pieces and putting them together. I don't know if anyone remembers these fun books from when you were a kid with like the little animal faces, or I had one of like famous people. So it was like the Queen of England and like the President of the United States, and you could switch their eyes and their noses and their mouths and kind of put together different pieces of people's faces. Um, I don't know if anyone remembers those. I hope so. Otherwise, this probably seems very strange. <laughs> but if you do, I think those are a great example of how you can use, you know, oh, let's find the best beginning of something. Let's find the best ending of something. Let's put them together. Now let's move the middle pieces around. You don't necessarily need to build something brand new from scratch every time. Um, fatigue is real. Uh, attention yeah. spans are short. Um, so just keep things fresh. Even if you have an ad that's working really well, change that thumb stop every few months or even every few weeks, constantly get new thumb stops in. You don't know how many times someone might be interested, but they've seen that thumb stop and been like, ah, same ad, I don't care. Introduce a new thumb stop, they might think it's something different and watch longer than they have before. So you don't have to change the whole thing. You can just change the thumb stop. Another great food example, because I love food references. Let's think back to that, you know, fast food thing we were talking about. Uh, let's let's think about the Taco Bell menu for a second here. Now, Taco Bell, when they have a burrito and it's got cheese inside and they're like, great, we got this cool burrito. It's got beans and cheese inside. Oh, people are getting bored of it. It's kind of fatiguing. They don't go back to the drawing board and say, you know what? Maybe we should release a soup. No, they're great at burritos. They're like, you know what we're going to do? Let's take the cheese and put it on the outside of the burrito. They take their same ingredients, they put them in a different order, and they throw that thing on the menu. It's on there right now. It's called gets the me every time. burrito. <laughs> yeah, it gets me every time. Every time. And you, you better believe when I saw a commercial for a grilled cheese burrito, I was like, well, I have to go try that. That sounds amazing. It's they just put the cheese on the outside. They didn't yeah. reinvent anything. They took the same ingredients they have, put them in a different order and reignited my love for their business. So that's a great way to think about your video ads. You don't need to go back to the drawing board every time. You don't need to rebuild it or start from scratch. Just take the things you do have, take the ingredients you have and keep putting them in different orders until you find the thing that works. Ah, cool. These are great things to test uh, your thumb stops. So your opening visuals will be like person versus object. We do this a lot where it's face versus no face. Like I had a, a brand of leggings that we figured out. Just show the leggings. Just show half the human, like half the body and just show the leggings. Half the human. It works better. People don't want to see faces in leggings ads for some reason. Male versus female, negative versus positive. This is another thing where it's like, oh, sick of, you can start even with copy. You can do like a negative copy, like, oh, sick of. Uh, uh, see-through leggings, you know, or, you know, buy these high quality leggings. You can test those organic first polish. Again, what we've said before is like those polished things. We tend to go more organic, but every once in a while you will get a, a polished piece of production that does work. So it I does think also, you know, a fun thing that we included that for is I think it's really difficult. It's a little bit counterintuitive to get people to um, believe us that the organic content works so much better. So sometimes if maybe, you know, you have a creative director or someone, you know, a higher up in your company and you're trying to push some new creative through, uh, test both of them. Say, listen, I know you don't want to go on the route of using the organic stuff. Uh, you want to use the super polished thing. Let us try them both. Yeah. And then let the numbers speak for themselves. I know personally what I think would probably perform better, but you know, let Facebook decide. <laughs> yeah. Your swim lane. So your types of audiences. So, uh, you know, uh, with the legging stuff, people that are into probably like Lululemon or something like that. You got to kind of brain. That's another thing when you're brainstorming like problems that like leggings users have uh, and researching. Also kind of looking into like similar audiences and uh, and broadening that too. Uh, yeah, I think a good example too of like swim lanes is that that fun sponge that we keep referencing because it's just such a unique object and we've had a lot of fun testing with it. Um, that, oh, first of all, Rachel, the Mexican pizza is one of my favorite menu items and I hope they never get rid of it. So thank you for saying that. Uh, yes, Rachel, agree. Um, cool. Anyway, so the sponge gel, some swim lanes that we've tested with that is, here's a couple of things about the sponge gel. 
one, it's a space saver. You can get rid of a loofah and like, you know, a body wash and like a massager or an exfoliator. It's all those things in one. So we tested one swim lane that was like, reduce clutter in your shower, save some space. Um, and then there's like, it's very nice. It smells nice. It's kind of luxurious. So then we tested a swim lane that was like, you know, treat yourself at home or like all about that luxury. And we tested that. And then there's this idea of it has like um, an antibacterial agent in it so that it doesn't grow mold. I don't know if anyone's ever actually looked into how much a loofah grows mold, but it's terrifying. Uh, so they just sit in showers and grow mold and it's gross. How many geese does it take to make a loofah? <laughs> Oh God, how many geese? Because the <laughs> third is if anyone's counting, we've had three goose uh, mentions from Sean here today. Um, but yeah, so anyway, then we did like a swim lane of like ditch your germ infested loofah. Explain like, what a swim lane is. Oh, yes, swim lane. I guess that's an interesting, um, I guess I the, the idea is when, I guess when you're an Olympic swimmer and you're, you're racing, everyone has their own swim lane, right? So you're all starting the same place, you're all ending the same place, but you're taking a different swim lane to get there. So swim lanes are kind of, I almost want to say different audiences, but not quite the way that- Angles to about, Yeah, it's not quite the way you would think about audiences, like as to actually getting audiences in Facebook, but just kind of the different, think of a swim lane as like the different type of people that would be interested in certain aspects of a product. Kind of like with my comforter example, where it was like, we attacked, uh, we hit the heartstrings with the, the feathers. I didn't say it. Uh, didn't say the bird. What kind of feathers now were they? Uh, geese, fe goose oh, feathers. Oh, oh. So that's a, like, that's a swim lane. Like someone that might be, might care a lot about the environmental impact of of down comforters another swim lane is people that care about how hot they get when they sleep those are kind of like what we're talking about when we talk about swim lanes someone whatever the specific audiences care about that's your swim lane like and that's that's kind of like the experimental and the research comes in right that's where so you can try and figure out which swim lane is is connecting with the people for sure. And and definitely some people can connect with multiple swim lanes, but it's fun to learn, you know, what might be the most popular swim lane out of uh, a product you're trying to sell. Um, cool. So some other things to test to would be uh, sales sequences. So the order, kind of like we said earlier, if you have three different value props listed, um, you know, it saves space, it saves time, it feels great maybe try, it feels great, it saves space, it saves time, or it saves time, it feels great, it saves space. It sounds very silly that you would get that granular about it, but I promise you something even as simple as that can make all the difference in performance. Um, and then again, you can test the length, you can do like uh, a full on video, you can do the full on 45 to a minute long thing, or you can do kind of like a teaser where it explains less and just kind of hypes up a product and then maybe it's 15, 20 seconds and ends with a really exciting click here to learn more if you just want to kind of do a little bit of a product teaser. Right. Uh, and then the text treatments, we've talked about those header colors, uh, you know, copy colors up front. Make sure it's legible. That's a big thing. Try to avoid like, you know, I always am correcting white copy on white backgrounds, you know, that kind of stuff. Uh, and you can test all those text boxes more versus less, that kind of stuff. Your your calls to action at the end, whatever your product you're, you're doing, if it's a subscription model or if it's shopping, you can do those. Uh, and ad copy, this one is one I never really realized how important it is. And this is the little section above your ad on Facebook. And uh, yeah, quotes work, reviews look. I personally love the emoji list. It doesn't work every time, but uh, is my most reliable when, when doing ad copy. Uh, the the list of like value props with with its like correlating emoji i love that the emoji list is always fun and yeah, yeah the ad copy too can really you know if you think about the type of ad you're putting out maybe if like that it's something that's shorter and a little bit more of like a product teaser then you might want a little bit extra information in your ad copy or if the video is like a really full-on product intro product explainer video then you can use like a quote or like a user review, like straight up put those quotation marks and you know, so-and-so gave it five stars because of this, this and that. So make sure too that you're thinking of it as like a full experience 
Um, I know it's easy sometimes to find like really successful ad copy and just keep reusing it over and over again, but definitely, you know, follow through and make sure that it's matching to the And that's copy. even something you can test as well with a dyna uh, dynamic ad or whatever it is. And just like this ad's doing really well. I'm going to run it four different times with four different ad copies. You can get that granular with it too and see which one's working best. So uh, let's continue here. Creative examples. Great. Oh, so here are some videos that we've um, made using everything that we've talked about. We've tested thumb stops on these. We Most of these examples are going to use super organic looking content so you can see how that works. Um, and then we got a couple, you know, stats on here. So this has a 50% thumb stop rate and it really helped uh, this company step up their advertising game. So this was huge for them. It's a very exciting video. So you can see it's super simple, it's super to the point. There's not a huge amount of production value. She's sitting in front of, you know, not the most attractive blinds I've ever seen. You can kind of see outside. The lighting's not perfect, but it worked because this feels organic to a news feed. This is a person people feel like they can trust. It doesn't look like a spokesperson. It doesn't scream advertisement. It screams, you know, real user review. It uh, feels organic and native to a social feed and it works really well for them. And the cookies are delicious. Oh, this jam again, I forgot we used this back, but here's just some really fun stats about it as well. We don't have to watch the 1000th time unless anyone wants to hear that banger again. <laughs> uh, but yeah, increase the ROAS 80%, increase the revenue 884%. I had to double check that number a couple times because it sounded so crazy, but I mean, that's what a simple bit of changing some text and moving some pieces of video around can do. And then uh, this one kind of like the the core video that we made has over 10 million views. And I think we even pulled this months ago. So who knows where it's at now. And because of that video, it sold out their product entirely twice. So we ran them, we had to stop running the ad, wait for them to get product back in and then ran it again and sold them out almost immediately again. So uh, organic looking uh, content and a couple of little tips and tricks we've shared today can can do this. Very exciting. Look at this, what a callback. I forgot this was on here. Oh, nice. What if your DNA doesn't like salad? Look at how it's starting with text on the screen already so we don't have to wait and worry about missing anything if it loads. So yeah, again, I this is so funny that we brought this up at the beginning. I forgot that we included this example in here, but I'm so happy we did. Uh, that video, the body of it kind of existed already. A lot of it was stuff that the, the company had already put together. And then there's a little bit of some stock video in there. And they were just struggling with having an interesting and exciting hook to start on. And it wasn't really performing very well. So just by adding this little you know, drop that salad. What if your DNA doesn't like salad thing right at the beginning there. And that kind of fun thing of the salad dropping on the floor, which was filmed, you know, on my cell phone, uh, in drastically increased performance. Uh, this video ended up taking up 71% of the accounts total ad spend. So they just threw everything at this and it just did really well. And again, something I filmed, I balanced my phone. I remember to this day, my first, my first week working here, balanced my phone with the pop socket on the edge of an ice scoop that I found so that it would stay up on the floor and then filmed us dropping that salad into the frame. Uh, this question here, have you found that featured in is valuable to customers? Yes, it works a lot. It's 
It's good to throw with some reviews. Uh, it seems to hold a little more lately for me. It's holding a little more weight than actual like user reviews. So because it's like, you know, the New York Times says this or, you know, maybe a lure magazine says that uh, featured in is something that is great to throw into your ads. Absolutely. And even it is even we've been even testing it as an opener and has been doing all right as well. So, yes, uh, these ad examples are all in vertical. Do they automatically adjust the landscape? Uh, so for vertical, this is uh, specifically uh, our ads are are curated for Facebook and uh, Instagram specifically. If you want to go YouTube, uh, yeah, you're going to want to film your stuff uh, horizontally, 16 by 9. But generally speaking, uh, you want to go vertical for Facebook ads and Instagram ads just because uh, your your phone itself is vertical. You're going to be scrolling through. It takes up more real estate on, the, on your actual phone when it's there. Like it'll fill the whole screen instead of just being like a little a wide screen, which is kind of doesn't fill your screen as much. Um, so yeah, I, would I definitely, definitely suggest I, that. I encourage people to even just film if you're doing it on your iPhone. Don't worry about trying to film horizontal and then editing it down. Just straight up film it vertical. That's what's going to fit on the phone anyway. So if you're leaning towards using it on Facebook or Instagram and not super worried about resizing it, uh, definitely film vertical. Yep. And then we crop it to four by five. Generally, you can do one by one as well. I've, I, I personally like four by five because it takes up more space on the feed. But I've tested it several times, and neither one really wins out. I mean, one will win one time, another will win. So you can do square, or you can do four by five. Yeah, I, I agree. I think the four by five is fun just to get a little bit of extra space on there. A square, it's hard to fit any type of visual and text. It can feel a little crowded. So yep. it gives you a little bit of breathing room. Um, oh, here's a full. So you got to see a thumb stop from a sponge gel ad earlier. But here's um, a full on. I think this was a holiday iteration we did of it. All right, let's check that out. Best gift ever. So this is sponge gel. Body wash. Buffer. Oh my gosh. All the soap is already inside of them. Just get it wet, and then all the soap comes out. These are so cute. I can get rid of six products in my shower. Exfoliate, massager, body wash, smoother, and moisturizer. This replaces all of them. Oh, it smells so good. That is so cool. Oh my gosh. Peppermint. It also has a lotion. Perfect stocking jumper. It also has a lotion. I, <laughs> I hate myself for that line. Um, it just sounds, yeah, it's not my finest moment, but you know what? We sold some lotion. Uh, so this video, uh, what's really cool about it is it's all cell phone footage. Everything on there was we sent the product to a group of girls and just had them send back, you know, them having a couple talking points about it, things they like about it, and then showing it, you know, as a gift under a tree or showing it being squeezed under the water. And we were able to kind of put together this full thing, just all with cell phone footage. And, you know, if we haven't convinced you yet, organic looking footage works, cell phone footage works. Um, you know, I think this is a great example of something that uh, doesn't feel, you know, super unpolished or anything. It feels very well polished and it feels very, you know, nice and put together using only user generated content. Cool. And that gets us to questions. I'm sure you guys got a lot of those. Um, these are questions that we get a lot. Uh, so I figure we can knock these out uh, before we dive into everybody's questions. If you have access to, if I have access to a nice camera and equipment, shouldn't I still use, should I still use my phone to shoot ads? Absolutely. If we can't hit it, hammer it enough. I mean, I would, if you have access to the equipment, I would test it personally, but I would lean I would make bets that your cell phone footage will outperform your your DSLR footage or whatever camera you got. Yeah, and not to mention, it depends on how much time you're looking at, but I think often with these, we like to think of it as a little bit of a speed game. You know, you want to be constantly iterating, testing, putting new things out, and just the process of filming on a traditional camera and you know, dumping all of that footage and then dropping it into an editing program. Sometimes it's just 10 times easier to take something that's on your phone especially if you film something on your phone that can be used as is without any editing, you know, you're, you're dragging and dropping it into ads manager directly from right. your phone. No need to really overthink or overcomplicate it. Um, and 
it gives you the correct framing that you already need. Another trick that I use is I sometimes film things in Instagram and then I just don't post them and I save it because instead of trying to mimic Instagram effects after the fact, uh, you can just use that camera straight up front and not have to worry about adding too much in post. So I've added text in Instagram before. Um, I've used filters, uh, boomerangs from Instagram. I do that all the time. And then I just save those and use those as footage to run in ads. Uh, yeah. Also, <laughs> if anyone has an ad that they want to uh, want us to go over or look at or anything, you can post uh, like a link to the chat in the chat or anything. We'd be happy to help you out with that. Uh, I would like to avoid iMovie and keep it all on my phone to create and edit. Is there any editing software on your phone? I mean, there's there's like Adobe Rush and stuff. I think there's even iMovie on your phone if you have an iPhone. Oh, Michelle. yeah. Sean, have you ever heard of that new thing called TikTok? <laughs> oh, TikTok. You can do a lot of editing in TikTok. You can do a lot. Yeah, yeah, like I said, editing stuff within, you know, Instagram too. You can, there's a lot you can do in TikTok. But you can also just search. I mean, a quick app store search of, uh, you know, best video editing. Oh, yeah, look, someone says best video editing apps for 2020. There's There's all sorts of stuff out there. Um, cool. Let's see. What is this next question here? I want to know, uh, how or when you switch from video to background color for text, lots of video clips. Oh, hold on. It moved. I have lots of video clips, dogs eating my dog treats. Oh, adorable. Love dogs. Uh, but don't know when to switch in and out of dogs to text. I think when you're saying, um, switch to text on color, you're talking about what we would refer to as like a title card or something where it's just a solid color with text on it. Um, you know, there's no right or wrong answer from here. I would feel out the pacing. I would also experiment with just including the text directly on top of the dog footage. Right. Uh, oh, here's some exam. Uh, here's some suggestions for free video apps. So, uh, v Maker on iPhone, and people are suggesting InShot. I've seen InShot before too. Here. Uh, let's see here. Free video. Uh, how do you? change the thumb stop for an ad you've already been running oh, okay so with this stuff like you can't really change creative on facebook without like unfortunately you're kind of just stuck with you're going to get rid of all the comments and the engagement and stuff but you can use the data you've gotten from that ad uh you can use the data you've gotten and just kind of you can create the exact same ad and then swap those intros out and then just turn off the old ad and go from there like that's kind of how you do it yeah you can't you can't necessarily replace it like sean said like within the actual ad that you've built out in ads manager it'll lose all the data that you have behind it but the point is to just be constantly gathering data to inform future decisions so use that and if you have something that's working well too you never have to turn it off turn it off when it starts you know tanking but if the performance is okay you can also then start running a new one with a new thumb stop alongside of it and kind of just watch those and see if one starts to take off better than the other um where is this wall i would like to go over the wall idea i don't have a video but would love suggestion where we as we were the wallet i also would love to talk about the, the wallet. product from going big wallet to small explaining a big wallet to small wallet you can even i mean i would i would get a big wallet and just bloat bloat it just put as much as you can in there you know make it look as ridiculous as possible um and I'm, I'm curious what the question is for this. Do you just want to make it look like it it swaps? I mean, you can just do a thing where you put your phone on the on your tripod, put the bloated wallet there, start recording, and then just you can pull it and then put another one there, the smaller one there, and then you can just splice those together and it'll look like it just swaps, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, that's a super simple thing that you could do. I love the idea of that. Um, definitely taking a big wallet to a small wallet. There's, you could do, again, kind of like Sean mentioned earlier, that, uh, what did you call it, the Goldilocks thing, that like split screen of one or the other. Mm -hmm. So a bad example on one side of someone with just their pocket looking huge because their wallet's so big, and then showing on the other side a very slim, nice, happy person with a nice um, uh, slim wallet. Yeah, something I learned too is a lot of people really respond to those, oh, it feels like a paid programming style of uh, like, uh, how would you explain, like, almost an exaggeration, you know, like the Q-tip one where it's like, stop using Q-tips. And the guy like barely puts it in his ear and he's like, oh, like, it's over oh yet. Like, God, that kind of stuff is here. exactly what you're kind of doing here with some of these. I mean, you don't have to be that over the top. I, I love that stuff personally, but 
Yeah, uh, I think another good idea if you're kind of trying to show like it's slim, but you have all the same amount of things in it. Um, a really fun thing is like time lapse videos where things go quickly, where you could maybe show, you know, the wallet sitting there and then unpack the items one by one, but film it over a time lapse. So then what takes you, you know, 30 seconds to unload these 20 items that are in the wallet, then on camera would be compressed into like three or four seconds where it just looks like, oh my goodness, an overwhelming amount of things uh, existed in that wallet. I'm so impressed. And then another fun test too that uh, we use quite frequently is uh, if you're ever worried the footage isn't exciting enough, reverse it. It's super easy to just reverse the footage and play it backwards. So you could do that wallet thing where you have all the things inside of it and you're taking it out and it shows all the different things that fit. And then you can play that footage backwards and it looks like you're very quickly shoving all these items into a wallet and then it ends on this super tiny compact wallet. That sounds very satisfying to watch. I would watch that. What are your thoughts on a short company founder video explaining the company's brand story as an ad to test? Uh, we've done that. They're just called founder videos. They're, that's great. I mean, I would definitely suggest doing that. Uh, people I like definitely would suggest doing it if if you have a unique story um, mm -hmm. that you know you think is is really. The only reason I'm saying that, I, mean, I know every person on the planet has a unique story, but you really want to make sure that whatever the story is feeds into the product and kind of, you know, helps show why it's cool. You don't want to just tell a nice story about a human and then be like, and then they also made this thing. Um, a good example would be we have a company that is a wine company and it's run entirely by a woman and they have this great message where they're trying to change the drinking culture and you know, they're not really big fans of the women in bikinis and all the, you know, beer ads and liquor ads. So they have this whole message of like empowering women and being more inclusive. And it's founded and owned by a woman. And she cashed out her 401k to buy 600 gallons of rosé. And then that ended up starting this company. Mm -hmm. So one, that's a really exciting hook for a video. A uh, woman cashes out 401k to buy 600 gallons of wine awesome intriguing you want to hear that story but then it's also about woman empowerment and leads into the message um so just make sure that the story that you're telling relates to the product very well and make sure that the story you're telling is is interesting enough and sets you a little bit apart look it looks like sean's got some fans over here there's so many uh quite, wait i got hey sean do you do you stream on Twitch? Nice, Mike. Thank you. Uh, yeah, this whole thing's being streamed on Twitch. <laughs> uh, what are your thoughts? Oh, I already read that one. How many swim lanes would you make at a minimum for consumer wellness products? I would give a suggestion. I would do. I would start with four, and then if all four don't really resonate, you go with another four. I mean, generally, when you hit four, you can find one that starts resonating a little bit. Uh, I always start with four, no matter what the product is. Um, see here what video would what video video ideas for work best for an aquarium store maybe a thumb stop idea what do you do you just sell uh, aquariums. aquariums i like that water's cool there's so much fun stuff you can do there fun fact uh ashan i think you actually taught me this fun fact if you're ever gonna film dropping things into water make sure you use only aquarium sand if you put real sand into an aquarium everything gets muddy really fast i'm sure he knows <laughs> i'm sure bill knows that because he has the aquarium store uh, but again yeah i agree i got just bought regular sand to do like uh water shots of like a golf ball going into an like it was supposed to like you know falling into water <laughs> and it was just the muddiest water ever i was foolish enough to think that i could just buy sand and throw it in there did not work out uh, <laughs> i love that um if you have access to a gopro or if you have access to a Ziploc bag you wanna put your phone in, or if you trust this claim that the current phones are actually waterproof, I think it'd be cool to, you know, show something from a fish's perspective, even just taking your phone and be filming and kind of do one of these while you're going, going around the cave. cave or in and out, yeah, like a cave and like through a plant. And then it's like, you know, one of those, what your fish sees. I don't know if anyone's watching those like TikTok trends of like, you know what the bottom of your bag of chips sees or something and it's like they cut holes in the bottom of things and watch you like reach into them but i would love to watch a you know what your fish sees or almost mimic even like one of those fancy um home tours on like real estate sites so they're like look at this home tour and it's just like look at this home tour but it's for fish 
Yeah, I love the POV idea. That would be great. Uh, <laughs> that's great. Decent, uh, nice mic. Uh, let's see what else. What would you say for swim lanes for straws? How do you and how do you? Oh, how about this one first? Because I asked this first. How do you find ideas hooks for your first version of thumb stops? So again, you want to just kind of research. Uh, this is something that I've asked a lot: is where do you do your research? Uh, Facebook comment. Go to your competitors. See what they're doing. See if they have anything that looks cool. Again, these aren't. These are not like this is not your movie. This isn't your like creative con baby that needs to be original. This is business, and we need to just take what works. Even if that if the competitor is doing something that's working, gank that idea, and then just do some version of that. And you can do it in your own voice. Uh, I, I love to look on Facebook comments. I love to look at the competitors. I'll even look for products over through Reddit or Twitter and just see what people are saying about those things. And those will all give me ideas. And like, oh, this is, seems like a common problem that's being commented about. How can I uh, address this in the opening three seconds? Yeah, or and a super fun trick as well, in case you are not aware, is um, Facebook Ads Manager has something called an ad library for every client or for every brand mm. that advertises through Facebook. So anything that ever advertises on Facebook, you can easily search and find that ad library. I'm gonna show them. So, you know, you could find a separate uh, for, oh, for, I forget your name, uh, the woman that was talking about the wallets. Um, I would maybe go to the ad library of thread wallets. I know that they have very slim wallets and they have a bunch of cool ads. Um, I would maybe go to the Facebook ad library and start looking through those and see how they explain, but definitely Here. finding inspiration from Facebook uh, ad libraries of different clients is super great. So uh, hold on. Uh, pause. So you go here, this is where you can find people's ad library, go to like their Facebook page and you go over here to Facebook uh, page transparency, see more. Uh, go to add library right here and boom, this is everything they're running. And so you can, so you can see here, oh, they're running this opener more than once. I would be willing to bet that this opener and copy works, right? So you can kind of see what's working. You can get a vibe for it. See and anything that they've been running for a long time, all the way since oh, this is, this has been running for a year, you know, like that kind of stuff. I look at like, wow, it's been running for a year. It should be doing all right. This is since April. So this is a great tool, a fantastic tool to use. I love that. Tons of ad ins in there that you can find. Um, and that's just the, that's just any brands. It's called their ad library. Yeah, I think someone just pinned it in there, but cool. that's a super cool place to find inspiration. Gosh, I was gonna say something else about what was the question, where to start? What was oh. the name again of that, that wallet? Uh, Red wallets. Have you? The only reason that I know their ads are good is because I fell into their funnel and I bought one of their products. <laughs> so well, it works if I fall for it because I'm pretty. I'm pretty. I feel like I'm pretty good about you know. Oh, this ad. Oh, they're trying to rope me into something because I work in the industry. But every once in a while, I'm like, dang, they really sold that to me. I really need this in my life. Um, what I was gonna say, I think the question was before we started talking about the ad libraries was. Uh, if you don't know where to start, kind of like where you would start finding thumb stops for things, looking for inspiration is great. Um, another suggestion I would make is kind of film yourself talking about explaining your product, showing it off, and then show it to people. And what you're looking for is the aha moment, that moment where people are like, whoa, that's cool. You know, sometimes it takes, sometimes you're so ingrained with your product, you don't know what that is anymore. Um, actually love using SpongeL for examples of things. Um, they had been working on it for quite some time when I was introduced to that team and they were advertising a bunch of different scents, um, a bunch of different, you know, product lines or colors, talking about how luxurious it was, talking about how great it feels. And I remember coming in and looking at the ads and being like, wait, I don't understand. Is the soap already inside of it? And everyone was like, yeah, yeah, you know, the soap's inside of it, whatever. And I was like, hold. Hold, please. I know you know the product because you've been working on it forever, but I had no idea that's what we were selling. We got to rewind to that. We got to talk about the fact that the soap is already in this sponge. That's your aha moment. You it's can oftentimes find those moments just by showing some stuff or explaining your product to a friend and kind of just waiting for their eyes to light up or waiting for them to be like, oh, that would be cool or oh, that would help me. That's your moment. Take that moment and figure out how to display it on camera 
Uh, I'm a psychologist who developed a planner to promote mental health. What kind of things could I include in the video? Uh, hmm. It depends how uh, how serious your brand is or anything like that. I mean, people at peace, obviously, uh, getting stuff done, like shots of people getting things done. Um, you know, or they, doing the, the negative, too, of yep. people that are stressed out, a bunch of clutter on your desk, overwhelm. Yeah, that... I, and that's a really triggering, um, not that triggering is the right word I should have used, but that's a really, I guess, thumb stoppy. It's something that captures people's attention talking about stress right now. You know, everyone's working from home. The world's in kind of an odd place. So if you have any type of thumb stop that says like, you know, need help managing stress or like anything like that, uh, I would definitely hit on that stress so, organization. Also good yeah, people. showing someone stressed will really work. Uh, some people will be like, I want to avoid the negative. I think sometimes you need to lean into it, especially if your product is helping fight that, you know? Yeah, and especially just for the thumb stop. You don't need to hang on the negative the whole time, but if you think that you're selling something that makes you calm and peaceful, just think about that out loud. You know, if you show, oh, I'm gonna show someone that looks really calm and peaceful and confident at their desk, no one's gonna stop on that ad. Right. That's gonna look like nothing in a news feed. So you do have to lean into something a little bit that might be attention grabby. Right. Uh, we sell masks and PPE, but Facebook restricted the ad on selling products related to COVID. What would be a good idea making these ad of these products without violating the pro policy? I don't. I thought that policy was lifted. That's or is crazy. it just for masks? And the PPE one is still. Hmm. Huh. Would that's something I got. I'd have to look up. I'm sorry. I, I, I definitely, I know for a fact the mask thing was lifted last month. You're now able to promote masks that are non-medical grade. Um, oh, you just have to be careful about your claims. You can't um, say that they'll keep you healthy or whatever. So a lot of times, this is actually a great question too. This can go into you know dieting apps or you know weight loss things, supplements like that. Uh, you really have to be careful about claims that you make on Facebook. And I think a couple just simple tr tips and tricks, um, ways around that is have people film UGC, have some users film themselves talking about it. And then instead of stating the claims, like this will, you know, keep you healthier, this will keep germs out. Just have them make a statement about how they feel. I feel healthier when I wear this. I feel safer when I wear this. And if you make it about themselves and a statement they're making, then it's a lot easier to get through kind of Facebook's red tape. Yeah. Uh, oh, I read that one. Read that one. Would people on beautiful beaches resonate with people more versus conservation? I'm not sure what, I'm kind of confused by this question. Would people on beautiful beaches resonate with people with people more versus conservation, you think? I'm, I'm not sure what, what is Yeah, what is have? the product? Yeah. I think it would depend on what what audience you're looking for and what um, product you're trying to sell. In general, people on beautiful beaches, uh, I mean, beautiful beaches are nice. I know I've, I've worked with a couple of swimsuit brands where it can get a little um, tiresome just showing a bunch of like women in bikinis on beaches. So finding creative ways to show that is always great, but I think definitely like cool scenery, cool sunsets, stuff like that works yeah. really well. Uh, what about music on TikTok? Uh, this was asked before. Does TikTok have a blanket mechanical license? With just avoid all the TikTok music in your ads. Uh, yeah, technically, those users, whoever posts it. I mean, if you're advertising within TikTok, if you're doing things within the TikTok platform, that's kind of fair game. It's a little bit the wild west in TikTok right now. But uh, I would definitely advise against ripping a video from TikTok and using it on Facebook Ads Manager for Facebook or Instagram ads. Just avoid the sound entirely or try to replicate it on your own or find something else. How about any suggestions for how to look for ideas for high luxury organic soaps? I was looking at Facebook library. I had bad luck identifying more ideas to test and don't want to copy anyone either. Um, hi, organic. Wait, what was the question? I can't find it. Any uh, from Michael W. Any suggestions for how to look for how to look for ideas for high luxury organic soaps? 
So I guess who I guess who who is your competition for this Five Zo organic coffee skincare? Let's look at Five Zo. Oh, I love looking at products. Right. Oh, I love looking at websites and landing pages. Ooh, already intriguing. It looks like yeah, people interesting. I I would immediately start rubbing coffee on uh, like as a first shot, just any part of the body coffee all over because it's kind of yes. like it's wow. kind of like whoa is, i mean even just this opening image on the website that i just pulled that's up great women's shoulders all covered with coffee grounds and it looks like mud or dirt and whether it's attractive or scary it's attention grabby and you have my attention absolutely so you um, so to be for good for them organic coffee skincare and google five zo is the first one that comes up so good for you guys uh -huh. Great work. Um, or any organic soap line too. There's a Java skincare. Uh, they don't use coffee though. Okay. Oh, can we share the screen? Duh. Uh, duh. Me and Sean are just going down a rabbit hole searching coffee soaps now. Here's the coffee. Look how cool that is. I would stop yeah. on that all day. I'm I already like fascinated. Yeah, I, I dig this. I would definitely do that. Uh, and then I've gone. I would love to see a header that just says, get more out of your coffee or get more out of your morning coffee. And just someone, uh, you know, a, a woman with coffee grounds in her hands, just doing this to her face. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Please. Go make that that. Add your oh, face. It's it. bizarre. Like all that stuff is. It's got crazy. all the yeah. It's got all the good things in it. <laughs> That's great. Uh, let's continue. Let's see what else we got here in the questions. Uh, what time? Uh, that too. I think coffee coffee soap would be a great um, you know factual uh, opener. You know things you didn't know coffee can do for your skin. I think sometimes things like that are fun where you don't introduce a product quite so quickly. Um, you know, without even saying like, oh, I bet you didn't know coffee could do this for your skin. Introducing five. So here's what we do. Wait until you introduce your product name till even later in the video, you know, wait a full 10, 15 seconds before you bring it in so that no one realizes they're being fed an ad quite so quickly and let them really start to read the facts you're presenting to them and really fall into it before you present the solution of your product. Um, I would love to learn. I would read all day if you tried to teach me about why coffee is good to rub on my skin. How often do you use animation FX in your videos? Uh, rare, uh, I mean, we have editors here that uh, specialize in that, but I don't think it's necessary. Uh, if you can just get copy on the screen, you're, pr you're doing pretty good. Yeah, and definitely the test that we've run of real people versus like, animations or little like cartoon characters being like, look at this or whatever, uh, real people wins every time. So no need to worry too much about coming up with custom am animations or trying to make cartoons to explain your products. Um, real people will win every day of the week. Okay, here's one. I'm gonna share my screen for this one. Uh, up, up, up. I have a site where frontline workers can create a t-shirt with their name, photo, logo in two minutes. What might you recommend for my videos? Thumb stops. Hi. This I'm is awesome. I'm Jane. Oh, let's check this out. Inspired by Frontline Hero. Oh. So if you can't see someone's face, you get to see their face. That's great. Wear your smile. Uh, I would immediately be, yeah, I would definitely, like these shots of people here, I would definitely be trying to get some people to shoot with this kind of a thing. This is, this this image right here is already a tr uh, just. And then having people that have used it talk about it. Get some yep. of that, you know, UGC footage, someone filming themselves selfie style, you know, in their place of work or wherever. Uh, being like, it makes me feel so much happier that people can see what I look like and can see my smile. It makes me feel a lot more personal. Any of that stuff, you could even, you know, go a little bit of the more emotional route and be like, you know, it makes me sad that people don't get to see me smiling at them. So if I can bring them a little bit more comfort by them seeing my smile, oh, I would eat that up. That's, right. That's great. Yeah, I think I think I think that's a definite route for this phone right into the uh, right into the, your phone camera with the shirt on, explaining it. Hundred percent. 
Uh, thumb stop ideas for hot sauce. Well, how hot is it? <laughs> and are you priding it on the flavor or the heat or the combo of the two? Question. Sean, getting into the important stuff here. <laughs> uh, another video. Uh, can I use part of another video I find on YouTube within my video? I would avoid that. Don't use other Oh, people. in general, that's a really great point you brought up, though. Um, also, with, like, Instagram as well, if someone posts about your product and, like, tags you in it or whatever, that does not mean you own that footage. That does not mean that you can use it in paid ads. So um, I've seen a couple people be like, oh, this celebrity used my whatever, and they have a picture, so we can use that in ads now. No, no, no. You have to ask permission. You have to get express, like, written signed permission to use that and normally it comes with quite a price to it um to use that so definitely be careful not everything on the internet is free uh which again makes me want to remind everyone that if you do get people to go film ugc footage of your product you can easily give them product for free in exchange for this footage make sure you get them to sign a release form saying that they're giving you this footage and you're allowed to use it now in your ads you don't want to accidentally gather a bunch of footage, start using it, and then have someone come back after you for some sort of lawsuit. Um, Always get permission. Jumping back to the hot sauce idea. Uh, so ideas for hot sauce. Uh, food shots are always great. Love food shots. And so are pour shots. I've always, I've done really done really well with pouring. Like, uh, like I mentioned olive oil a while ago. That was a big one that I've been using for a while. That was probably in the 40% for the thumb stop. So any sort of like yeah, I would definitely do some, maybe even some slow-mo, or I would test maybe slow-mo versus regular motion, but like, you know, on some avocado toast or whatever the food, some sort of attractive looking food, food does really well. Also, bite shots, if you can just put it on something and, and get- And big reactions. That's a perfect opportunity for those, you know, the big expressive faces. If you oh. bite something and you give one of these, like the opening thumb stop is this. You know, or you're just shocked or, you know, your eyes are watering. Love that. Yep. 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 Uh, oh, man, we're getting a lot here. Uh, oh, I think we're way behind. Would you have any suggestions? That's busy. I was just thinking of. All right. All right. Sorry. That was a. Uh, what is the hot? Yeah. I'd love to know the, yeah, hot, I would love sauce to know the hot sauce brand. I love hot sauce. <laughs> all heat love. It's going to be sent to you later. A lot of good. Information. I think. I think, yeah, I do. Uh, people... Levels award-winning flavor. What is this? Wait, what? I missed it. I was, I was reading. It says all heat levels, award-winning flavor at all levels. What is your brand, sir? Yeah, I need to Would know. Would you join this just so you could get free advertising? Because I feel like Sean and I are about to turn around and buy some hot sauce right now. I know. I like hot sauce. <laughs> Tell me about your sauce. Uh, what is a competitive budget to ask a startup on creating for? So what are the additional costs I should request for advertising? So I would suggest uh, figuring out your budget. How much do you want to spend? Uh, this is such a tough question because it it really relates to like, uh, it, it all matters on how, like, how can, is it a big consideration product? Is it a low consideration product? Uh, like the higher consideration products are going to take more spend to get, to get a sale, you know? Um, generally figure out what your goal CP, uh, your cost per acquisition is, uh, and then spread that out over time. So you may only do 10 bucks a day or only do a few a day. I will usually let an ad run three days, three to four days without touching it. And then I'll dive into the data and see what's going on. Uh, the budget is a tough question. I would, I would just see what your goal CPA is, run some ads. And if you're not hitting any sort of click throughs or anything, at, once you hit half of your CPA, your best bet is to try something else. Yeah, that might be a fun to follow up class since we talked about a lot of the creative and how to, you know, things to test. Um, Hans, you know, maybe we can see if someone else can organize a follow up one of testing budgets and spend and, you know, kind of the next step once you have the creative made how to follow through with it. Because again, you know, Sean's giving you the tip of the iceberg here, but there's a whole, there's a whole different, you know, hours worth of information we can share uh, with that. Wait, I saw a question that I really liked. It was about men's cactus-based skincare for men. Did they? Do we have an ad for? Or, uh, without, there is a link, but I can just tell you without even looking at it. <laughs> a lot of times with men's skincare stuff or men's, you know, soaps or anything. 
it's a super easy, um, you know, a super easy, simple thing go to would be a bunch of girly, frilly pink things on the ledge of a shower and just knocking those out. Of, I would love to see someone slapping those out of the way and then setting a cactus down in place and then like yeah. you know, for men's skincare or whatever. Oh, okay, I'm going to share this. Different. Um, this is a great shot. Hold on. I'm going to show you right here. Uh, boom. This is the cactus skincare right here. Uh, these are all great, by the way, just up close and personal. There's an opening shot here that I really like. This, that, the squirt shots, killer. I would even reverse that. So it's like the, the lotions in your hand, and it just looks like you're sucking up. Like those little weird little techniques where you're like, what is? Like someone would be yeah, like, Yeah, just uh, enough to get someone to stop and say, wait, what did I just watch? That's that's kind of the goal there. That's hilarious. These are all great shots. Even the one with the guy with the cream all over his face, like super up close face, covered in stuff, all great. I like all this stuff, yeah. Yeah, this is really good stuff. I'm into it. Cactus-based skincare. In the, yeah, I would use these featured in, absolutely. Yeah, I'm telling great. you, slap a bunch of pink bottles out of the frame, set down a cactus, throw a header on there that says something about, you know, finally skincare for men or right. something like and that. Right. A swim lane I've hit with some man, men's soap is like stop using your wife's shampoo, which is like a thing that all of us, I think do, many of us do. Like I do it. Like I don't have really a guy's soap or shampoo. I just kind of use my wife's body wash. So, you know that's a good angle to hit like stop using your wife's body wash that's hers <laughs> right get your own get out of here that's that's great um i did realize i would i could do this all day this is I know. so fun um but uh it's five and i think we have to wrap it up um this has been so great though you guys this uh i just want to thank everyone for sticking around for the full two hours here and for participating and asking all these questions. Uh, I really appreciate all the time that you guys have spent with us. I hope we provided something helpful. Um, please check out our website. Um, you know, if you wanna learn anything else or you wanna talk to us about getting in on doing some creative for you, uh, please check out our website, mute6.com. Um, you know, ask for, you can you can get met with uh, a representative that kind of can kind of go through your brand and talk to you about things they can do to help you. And then you can definitely throw in that you saw Stacy and Sean and you want some of that fun expertise involved and we'll be there for you. Yeah. Thanks so much, everybody. Uh, appreciate it. This has been great. Thank you so much. Hans, did you need to hop on with anything else or are we good here? I think we're, there's a panic button here. I've been dying to hit. <laughs> should, we, should we hit the panic button? No, I don't know if that screws everything. It just deletes everything. Um, all right. Well, I think that we're just going to have a really awkward exit. Should we just leave it running and just both get up and walk yeah, out? Yeah, it'll just through? be a blank screen. Bye. <laughs> all right. Bye, guys. Thanks. All right. Thanks, guys. Bye. Have a good one.